Julius Malema, I got a taste of the EFF the last time I did a documentary in South Africa. Mm -hmm. You guys were just born. It was at the time Nelson Mandela had died. Elections were coming up in a few months. People weren't sure if you guys were the real deal. And now you, you're setting the tone when it comes to government policy, especially on, on expropriation of land without compensation. What does that say about your organization? Well, uh, our organization is full of thinkers, the people who have got vision, the people who want to liberate the economically um, oppressed people, the landless masses of our people. And uh, we are forward thinking and uh, we are not just accepting the conditions as they are, hoping that uh, there will be some angel from somewhere coming to resolve our problems of inequality uh, in South Africa. So uh, if you check the EFF, um, we've always been proposing practical solutions to issues of uh, economic freedom uh, in, our, in our country. Um, one of the things that we are now proposing um, as a law is a state-owned bank. One of the things that we'll be proposing as a law is the nationalization of uh, the Reserve Bank. So we, we, we are full of ideas. And um, I don't understand why the ANC, the ruling party, find it difficult to come up with ideas and implement those ideas. They've had a mandate overwhelmingly for a long time. Yes. You were yes. a youth leader among the ANC. Mm -hmm. They had all the levers of power in control and they, they continue to have the levers of power in control, yet South Africa is still tremendously divided and unequal. Where did they screw up? Well, um, they got co-opted by capital. Um, when the ANC first came into South Africa after unbanning, the first meeting of the ANC was held uh, in a farm owned by Johan Rupert organized by Trevor Manuel. That's where they messed it up. And um, they made a lot of concessions. And uh, Madiba himself went to stay in a house of uh, one of the richest mining tycoon called Minel. Madiba himself staying in that house. Then he opened himself up to a lot of uh, capitalists who approached him and suggested all manner of things. And they just became compromised. And as a result, they are unable to get out of that uh, a situation because they are in bed uh, with white monopoly capital, which decide the economic direction and policy uh, of South Africa. But at the moment, have they taken the, the zip out of, out of your expression, given that they've come on board with expropriation of land without compensation. They said, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do this. No, well, they've not taken any zip out of uh, 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 the EFF because uh, uh, actually we're more uh, popular now. The people are beginning to appreciate that uh, the EFF has got a superior logic because everything they said is uh, happening exactly as they, they said. We said free education. They said we were working with the CIA to destabilize the country, when we said fees must fall, when we said free education is possible. Uh, they said all manner of things later on to agree uh, with us. We said Zuma must go. We, they said no, we are used by imperialism to purge every leader who is in bricks and all that. Zuma later on left. We said expropriation of land without compensation. They came. Uh, 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 on board. So almost every issue the EFF is raising or raised before, it's happening. So why would people then leave the EFF to go to the followers of the EFF? Because the ANC has effectively become, become a, an EFF follower. But they still get the votes. They get the vote because um, our people take time to adjust to new ideas. Um, it is the nature of human beings, um, but all equally that we've got a bad history of new parties in South Africa where parties get formed, they don't last, people fight over positions, and South Africans don't want to make that mistake. 
So we have no problem when we don't get more votes as the EFF. We have to earn it. And you can only earn it through hard work. You can only earn it through longevity. People must see the staying power so that they don't invest their emotions into a popcorn organization which is going to disappear uh, in the next two months. So first elections in 2014, 1.1 uh, 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 million votes. In 2016, 1.2 million votes. And we are the only party in South Africa in 2016 that increased its uh, votes. The DA declined, the ANC declined. So why should we complain? We are relatively young. A lot of our people have got a problem of ageism. They can't trust young people. Um, we are uh, people who uh, were never ministers before, mm -hmm. were never premiers before, were never in cabinet before. So we have no track record of governing. So people still have got their doubts. And through action, the EFF will win over uh, the people. Talking to EFF supporters, it's very rare for me to come across supporters who are ideological. A lot of them essentially say, the ANC let us down, we're going to give the EFF a chance. Mm. We don't have services. In, in Kwakwa, it's Vusi Chavalala is corrupt. Mm. We want to give the EFF a chance, right? So they're not necessarily talking to me about Marxist revolution. They're not talking concepts. They're saying we were let down and there's a gap and we want to give the EFF a chance. So with that in mind, are you ideological or are you pragmatic when it comes to the needs of the people? But that is ideology. What more do you want? When people say there are no services, that is ideology. Right. The people want their land. The people want their wealth. They want to own it. They are let down uh, by, by, by the, the ANC. When people say to you, we don't have water, that's ideological because water is life. They are being denied life by, by the ANC. They will not put ideological issues like uh, theoreticians, like intellectuals. You cannot expect that from the masses anywhere in the world, including uh, in, in Cuba. When you go to Cuba, you can't get the best of the best articulation of Marxism. Mm. So to expect that, it will be unfair uh, on, on our people. They give the EFF chance because of the ideological perspective of the EFF, which seeks to change the patterns of property ownership in South Africa uh, from the haves into the hands of the have-nots. So that's what we're dealing with. 20th century history, it hasn't really worked for a lot of countries when that's happened. Mm -hmm. History of socialism. Yeah. Cuba, recently Venezuela, I guess, in, in many ways. Soviet Union. You've been asked this question, you know, I, you're, not a, you're not a stupid guy. I'm not going to come to you and with some zinger and go, where, you know, where did socialism work? And you go, you're stumped, right? Mm. Is there a way for you to truly have Marxist, socialist revolution in this country when socialism's track record has been so bad over 100 years? But why are you not giving an example of uh, China, for instance? You, you, you deliberately omit China. But they turned capitalist, didn't they? No, they never said that. You, 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 they, they, they are led by a communist party of China, right. which is in pursuit of socialism. They have to develop the productive forces first so that there's equal uh, distribution. There's enough to distribute. So to say China has turned uh, capitalism is actually incorrect. They've never abandoned the strategic vision mm -hmm. and mission of the Communist Party uh, of China. So, so they're a model. So, so, so they are a model. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's what we need here in South Africa. We need to develop the productive forces so that mm -hmm. when we now unleash a full socialist state, we have amassed enough mm -hmm. to distribute to everyone. Mm -hmm. the, 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 your success, I don't know how you measure it because you cannot measure the success of a socialist revolution through uh, the success of capitalist revolution. Because a capitalist revolution is measured through profits. In a, in a socialist revolution, we don't measure through uh, profits. We, we measure its success on how it has taken care of its people. The, the high levels of literacy in Cuba, the child uh, mortality in Cuba, mm. the 
the life expectancy, expectancy in Cuba, um, the type of quality of life the people of Cuba live, it is what we want uh, for our people. They must have access to the best education, they must have access to the best health uh, facilities, they must have access to proper uh, schooling, proper houses, and they must get jobs uh, for themselves. Obvious, a socialist revolution in a world dominated by capitalism, it will be isolated. It will find it difficult uh, uh, to survive. It will not be as perfect as perfect defined by a capitalist system because the two are not the same. Like we yeah. want yeah. a system where we all produce and then we distribute amongst ourselves, not for individual profit. We don't want that. China is prosperous, right? Yes. But it comes at a price, you would agree. There's no Julius Malema equivalent in China going, Xi Jinping must go to his face, because yes. that guy will get locked up and disappear forever. <laughs> Is, is the, is the Do you want that for South Africa? No, no. It, it is, it is, you know, the laws are passed by people mm -hmm. and they choose the type of laws they want for their countries. We must respect the sovereignty of China. They chose to do their things the way they are doing. Is it working in China? It is working. Will it work in South Africa? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It will not work. They will want something different here uh, in South Africa. Remember that when we say we're looking at uh, models like China, we don't mean copycat type of an arrangement. What is it that is working in China? What is it that has failed in China? Will it work in South Africa? If it doesn't work in South Africa, we don't apply it. But the strategic objective is that all must have access. And nobody would disagree with you? No, you, capitalism will disagree with me. No ordinary human being who is told we should live in a more equal society would disagree with that, I don't think. I mean, even for example, the most ultra-capitalist suffering from crime can see that inequality <laughs> is the driver of crime. So if there was less inequality, maybe you wouldn't be hijacked or, or whatever it is, right? Let's focus on the land. Expropriation of land without compensation. Tell me what it means to you, because it means lots of things to lots of people. No, no, it means it's very simple. The state owns the land. It means exactly what's happening in China. The state owns the land. And then it gives it to you on a long lease. You lease it from the state. In that way, everyone else will have access to the land. And I'm not going to listen to any nonsense that says investors are going to leave. All multinational companies and foreign investors who have invested in South Africa have got some investments in China. Why are they not leaving a country called China where the land is owned by the state if they are so allergic to state ownership of the land? Here in South Africa, major projects that are happening with a lot of foreign investment are happening on state-owned uh, 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 properties, long lease state owned, as we speak now. But why, why should South people trust South the government to, to own all this land? You've seen how corrupt the ANC has been over the no, past No, but why years. should people trust government to, to hold their money on, the, on their behalf? Because the ANC, as we speak now, owns the Reserve Bank. You, wouldn't, they, trust they, the, you wouldn't trust the ANC to own all of the land in the no, country right I, now? I've trusted them to own all of the money of the country through a democratic process. Right. Yeah, why would you trust them to own the money? The money, eh? money, and you can't trust them with the land. What is that? They are having the money of South Africa as we speak now. Right. They are having a, a union building, the headquarters of South Africa as we speak now. So they were given that mandate through a democratic process. Who am I to question that? I'm contesting that they are not the more, the best of the best to be relied on. Mm -hmm and the EFF is that alternative. So I don't pass policy on the basis of who is in government. Because if you say the state can own the land, then the EFF is the government tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? So you don't pass uh, policy based on 
the current situation. You must have a vision. We say in the state must own the land because we are going to be government. We know that for sure, that we are going to be government. So anyone who's going to be engaged in corrupt activities when it comes to the land will expose that person the same way we're exposing them now when they steal our money. We didn't take the money away from them and say, let's give it to individuals to hold it because we can't trust these people. No, we still gave them the money to hold it for us. Every time they steal it, we expose them, we arrest them, and we fight that they can be sent to jail for a very long time. The same will apply with the land. That anyone who steals the land, anyone who engages in shenanigans that are unconstitutional and unlawful, such will be prosecuted and sent to jail for a very long time. What about people who are invading land right now and occupying? Is that wrong? It's not wrong. All, uh, by the way, we are products of land occupation. Sure, historically, uh, yes, certainly. Yes, but yes. it's illegal now, it's against the law. Even then, it was illegal. Of course, yeah, I mean, so. of course it's wrong. <laughs> it has always been. But how do you build a society for, if... For black people sure. to have a piece of land, they've always said it's illegal. Uh, uh, so black people have always taken land for themselves. This is a way to that produced Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. It's a product of illegal, so-called illegal occupation. Today is the biggest township uh, in Southern Africa. So it, it has always been like that. Firstly, we start by occupying uh, the land because we're trying to exert pressure on the state. And later on, the state comes to accept and they put services and they build houses for us and all of that. So there's nothing wrong. It has been, it's part of the struggle. Well, so it's a two-way pr approach. You fight in parliament for one thing and on the ground you tell people go and grab land. Well, no, well, there's no grabbing of the land, it's occupation, it's our land we're occupying. Sure, I mean however you want to read it, go take back your land. Yeah, we're taking right. it, it's our land. And, and, we've, and we've taken an unoccupied land as a demonstration of our seriousness to the issue of land. Mm -hmm. We've never grabbed any farm, we've never taken any land which is in use. We've never done that. Uh, but we're using this unoccupied land as a way of demonstrating to the international community and to our government that we are serious about the issue of land. Mm -hmm. Please put the systems in place, expedite it, otherwise it will become ugly. And we don't want it to be ugly. It is these types of land occupation programs which have resulted in parliament passing a resolution that said, Let's go back to our people and ask them, what should we do in order to speed up the process of land uh, uh, redistribution? Isn't there a more political interpretation of that? It's that the ANC and President Ramaphosa see that the EFF's taking votes for, away from them, so they have to shift a little bit to the left now, and this is one of the things they're using in order to not have such a rapid decline come 2019. That's it. Absolutely, it's political. Yeah. Um, uh, politics are about uh, uh, dynamics and uh, balance of forces. Um, President Ramaphosa and the ANC, not even President Ramaphosa, I think in 2006, the ANC po passed economic policies which were neoliberal because they were facing a serious challenge from the right. And they has those policies which, has, which have resulted in this crisis we're having today of high unemployment, high inequality in South Africa. So now they are facing a contestation from the left. They have to, from time to time, strike a balance so that we don't have a ruling party which is just one-sided right. and exclude the majority of our people. So if they are doing it for politics, good enough for us because our people will benefit. If they are doing it for politics, good for them, they will get vote, our people will get the land. It's okay. We want our people to get the land. When I spoke with Monsieur Lekota, you can't deny his credentials, yeah. his experience. Yeah. He's very passionate about this issue and believes you're fundamentally wrong on this. I asked him what would Madiba say about this issue. And he said, Madiba would tell me, Tara, what is wrong in principle can never be right in practice. Is there some sense to that? No, I mean, Terra has lost his mind. Really? Yeah, I think uh, 
he need to get his mind examined. He has lost it completely. One morning he wakes up and he says it's A and C. And one morning he says things that sounds like he's not a normal upstairs. I he mean, believes it's theft. Just taking land from someone is theft. No more, no less. So he believes you can't, no matter how bad the injustices were in the past, you can't fix it by grabbing. And that is madness. How, do I, how does taking my car, which you stole from you, become a theft? Mm -hmm. You steal my car, I come and take it. I find it, I take it. In, in, in Tara's mind, that is theft. I mean, that is insane. We're not stealing anything. We're taking what is rightfully ours. But I'm not taking my car and leaving you stranded. I give you a ride. This is my car, I'm taking it. Without compensation? How, how are you getting Where's a ride? No, no, I'm giving right. you a ride. We're driving together. Right. I won't leave you here stranded. Right. Yes. Why should I compensate a criminal? You steal my car, you want money from me to buy it. For, you're committing more crime by wanting me to buy from you. Because that was one of the fundamental things in 94, which was, okay, we press reset from Madiba. White people, you, you've been born into privilege, but you don't bear the sins of your forefathers. Let's work together. You contest that. Hey, Chief, I was not there in 1994. I was not there when Madiba clinched uh, deals with those people. Right. If there is any commitment Mandela made with them and then we are going against it, they must go to Mandela. Ne? We don't owe them anything. We, we have no agreement with them. Nothing. And we are not bound by Mandela's resolutions at all. We are not bound by the decisions taken in the negotiations. We are not there. We are here now. And we are going to chart a way forward and determine our own destiny. Madiba did what he had to do. The conditions then maybe were not favorable for him to do what we are doing now. And we are not Mandela. I think people should get that very clear. We are not Mandela, and we are not going to do Mandela things here. We are doing our own thing now. And this will benefit uh, our children. We are so uncompromising about that. We have compromised for far too long. And what is even worse is that those who are in possession of the land are refusing to release it. They said willing buyer, willing seller. Even if you, have go, you are a willing buyer, they are no longer willing to sell. Mm -hmm. All the prime, the so-called prime land, they are taken by them or they sell it to foreigners. They sell it at abnormal amounts. Mm -hmm. If you go to Cape Town, if you come here in Santen, in Jobek here, land is extremely expensive, right. making it impossible for even a willing buyer in South Africa to buy a piece of land at waterfront. That is a deliberate exclusion. Mandela gave them a favorable deal. He said, willing buyer, willing seller. They didn't take advantage of that and sell at a reasonable price. No, they were not willing to sell. They even increased the price. Cape Town is only affordable to the foreigners. Not even a South African multimillionaire black person, Robert Goumet, will not afford to buy a place at Waterfront without the support of the PIC. Mm. No, you have to get some huge financial institution to back you up before you can afford to buy a piece of land in Waterfront uh, in, 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 in Cape Town. What type of policy is this? What type of freedom is this? That 24 years into democracy, we are worse than the way we were uh, uh, during apartheid. It can't be. Then terror must tell us what must happen. What is terror's policy, which is different from what is happening now? Is Terra saying we must continue with willing buyer, willing seller, even when it's not working? It has not worked. Multimillionaires in South Africa can afford houses, proper houses, at strategic places in this country. They've made it deliberately so to exclude black people. In the townships now, go to Soweto, houses that were extremely cheap in Soweto, are now extremely expensive. Why? Property must be 
a reserved thing for white minority. But because we can't say this is for whites, we use money to exclude and perpetuate racism and apartheid. Of course. I mean, the situation's bad. We were in Dipslut yesterday. Dipslut should not exist in 2018 South sure. Africa. And the, the irony of Dipslut is that it emerged and ballooned and developed post-94. I last went there about, I don't know, 12 years ago. It was tiny, yeah. a bit rough. Yeah. Now it's, it's a mess, right? Yeah. It's, hor it's horrendous. Yeah. It's a bad place. Something's wrong. Yeah. I guess a lot of people disagree on how to fix the solution. But the good thing is yeah. that we're talking about it. Of course. We, 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 and Parliament's healthy. We, I mean, yeah, we, 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 stuff, we right? welcome this. We welcome this debate because yeah. in the past, it was a taboo right. to even talk about it. Because we're the rainbow nation and everything's fine. You will offend the, the white people, you will offend the investors. Don't even touch it. Right. That's why it stayed like this. But the fact that we're talking about it, and as the EFF, we're not saying uh, uh, we're correct in everything. Right. We're listening, we're engaging, we're debating, we'll be told. Uh, uh, once a consensus is reached, we're more than ready uh, uh, to work with everybody to find a solution. There's a lot of anxiety amongst white people, especially white farmers. We spoke with a white farmer who was tortured horribly. An elderly woman drills through her feet and all sorts of horrible things. She was called horrible things while she was tortured and they didn't take much also. Whether it was racially motivated or not, I can't tell, I'm not a detective, right? But ultimately, this woman told me that she blamed you and your rhetoric for what happened to her. So, for example, things like in Newcastle when you said, you know, we're, we're not calling for the slaughtering of white people, yeah. at least not for now. Whether that's a throwaway line or not, you know, to the crowd, this woman blamed you for opening up the gates of hatred and division and racism and, according to her, possible genocide of white people. Respond to her and tell me how you really feel. She's a racist. She, you know why she hates me? She hates me because I say we must be equal to her. That's th they hate that. The white people hate the idea that we think we can be equal to them. That's the only thing. She knows I never said there must be a white genocide. She hears me better than black people because I speak in English most of the time. She doesn't need an interpreter. She hears me very well. She knows what I mean by everything. But they hate the idea of equality. That irritates them, that a monkey can never be equal to a white man. They don't want that. I'm hated for that. There's no crime I've committed. I've never slept a white person. I've never done anything to a single white person bad in this country. Nothing. I've never called for their slaughter. I've never called for their killing. Her torturing, it's crime. After interviewing her, you should have asked Mpo to give you more, or go to the police station to ask for more cases of black women in this country, how they get to be treated by their partners, by criminals. They've got more terrible story to tell than what she's telling you. They die every day. Who, who called for black people to be tortured like that? Who called for black people to be killed like that? Black girls to be killed like that? No one. Why are they being killed? It's crime. So because she is white, she must not be touched. She must not be affected by crime. Anything affecting her is political. It can't be crime. It means these blacks are coming for us, which is not true. It's a false alarm. They hate me for saying we must be equal. That idea alone traumatizes them. Remember that when you are so used to having this potion and someone says, I'm bringing more people and as a result, you must have half of it. They're like, no man, it's not going to happen. But I don't mind it. They will get used to the idea. They, they will have to work themselves out of privilege. Because equality threatens privilege. They are scared that privilege is going away. That's why they hate me for that. They hate everyone who wants to liberate them, 
the mind of black people, that we are not monkeys, that we are not subhuman. We are human too, and we are equal to them. They took our land, and when they took our land, they said we don't have title deeds, uh, uh, because that's a requirement in terms of European standards. And if you don't have a title deed, you can be treated like an animal. Therefore, you are subhuman, because no lion can produce a title deed, although is the king of, uh, of the jungle. No, no elephant can produce a title deed. We are equal like uh, uh, elephants. We are subhuman. And, and anyone who says to these people, no, you are different from animals. You are human too. You too can work the land. You too can own the land. You too can employ white people. And they can work for you. They're like, he's being disrespectful, this one. He wants to elevate these people to our level. What do we do? They start smearing me. He's a racist. He wants to kill white people and all that. I'm back in this, that which I'm putting on the table is the best offer to white people. Let black people too own the land and see how much crime is going to reduce and see how much service delivery protests are going to reduce because people will be preoccupied with working the land. They are idling now. They don't own anything. They are waiting for employment. They are standing at the robots with qualifications. They went to school. They responded to Madiba's call that you kids must go to school. We have gone to school. There are no employment. And I'm saying to these people, the employments are not in the white people's hands. The employment is in the land. Let's get our land and let's work our land. I'm hated for that. What? What? Where? I mean, uh, uh, I, I, don't, I, 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 I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm saying to you, we have not called for the killing of white people, at least for now. I can't That's, guarantee the future. Yeah, but I mean, you'd understand somebody watching that, especially as it gets shared on Twitter, they freak out. Ah, it sounds like a genocidal ah, call. Ah, cry babies. Cry babies. I'm not calling for the, the slaughter the, of white people, at least for now. The, I, we, uh, I can't give you a guarantee of the future. Especially when things are going the way they are. Subtext. Especially things, if things are going the way they are, there will be a revolution in this country, I can tell you now. There will be an unled revolution. An unled revolution is the highest form of anarchy. Even me, I'll be a victim of that. Why? Because I've committed a class suicide. I'm no longer with them in the townships. I'm now staying in town, I'm in parliament, I'm earning a salary. When they rise, they will rise against the middle class and I will not even stand in front of them and stop them because they will say, you sold us out, you left us in the townships, you went to join them there. I can tell you that now. This inequality, which is growing, which the gap is widening and racially based, blacks becoming more poorer and whites becoming more richer, is not sustainable. Of course it's not. And, and, and this will lead to loss of life. So I, I'm saying to you, not under my leadership will we call for the slaughter of white people. I don't know who's coming after me. I will not speak for them. But they are, they are, they are, they are alarmists. They are crybabies. They are attention seekers. Nothing is going to happen here. No, no one is going to slaughter them. The farm attacks is just an act of crime, it must be punished. In the same way crime is punished in the township, it's not a, 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 a genocide on white people who are concerned. Even in the farms there, black workers are killed. Why is the lives of those black workers not exposed to the world, that black workers are being killed? Is that a black workers genocide? Should we now be alarmist and say there's genocide of black, black farm workers? No, it's a crime. A white man gave, a, fed the lions with a body of a, a black person, right? Feeding the lions with a, a human being. Why? What should we do? Should we say uh, whites now are killing a black people? Let's go for them. No, it's a crime. We have to arrest that racist and send him to jail for a very long time. We shouldn't use 
criminal incidences to not be alarmist and raise unnecessary fears. We're the most peaceful organization registered with the IEC with a clear constitution and a program of action. In any of those documents of the EFF, nowhere do we call for genocide of white people. We are going to stay in this country with white people. We coexist, they've naturalized here. I always say that the, the call for white people to be driven to the sea is so stupid like a call a person will make one day that we must cut all the trees uh, in South Africa. How is this country going to look like without trees? White people have naturalized here. They live with us. We now marry each other. We go to the same churches. We work together. We, we, we shop together. Our children now go to schools together, those of us who can afford, right? So why would we call for the slaughtering of such people? We are not calling for the slaughtering of white people. We are fundamentally disagreeing with white people on how we are going to redistribute the land uh, in South Africa to create an equal society. White people are scared of equality. They don't want it because equality is a threat to privilege. When you're president, not if, but when, in your eyes, mm -hmm. will there be such a place as Dipslot? No, not at all. Not at all. We cannot have our people living in congested areas like that. It, it creates health risk. It is not conducive for children. It's not good for human beings. There's enough land for everyone in South Africa. Deep slot people must be reallocated and they must find decent place for themselves. The problem is that this congestion is created by the fact that they want to be closer to their workplaces. Mm. But once they start working the land, there will not be a need of influx into big cities because people want to be closer to their workplaces. They want to work the land. They want resources. We must create a democratic cities, for instance. I come from a province called Limbobo rich with minerals. There's a town there called uh, uh, uh We call it, uh, it's, it's, it's in Skukun, it has got um, a, a platinum. I don't understand why the ANC did not create a new city there with the discovery of such, uh, you know, minerals. Because Johannesburg was created through the discovery of gold. Mm. So if minerals create cities, why is platinum not creating a new city in Polokwane? And through the creation of a new city in Polokwane, then you are going to take these people who are in deep slow back to where they come from because industries are there, the city is there. We've got a new developing place called Lepalale uh, in Limpopo. Why is that not being created as a new city? Why is PE not being expanded and new opportunities created? by the democratic state. But your model, the Chinese are coming in and working in these places. Well, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a situation where the EFF works with the Chinese, they won't bring their people into our country. Uh, 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 they will do it through our own terms. The same thing with Europe, the same thing with the Western powers, the same thing with Russia. We will work with everybody who's prepared to work with us through our terms. That period, of inferiority by African leadership. It must come to an end. We must engage with USA, with Russia, with China as equal partners, not, not as inferior partner in the whole uh, scheme of things. Otherwise, if they are not prepared to engage with us at an equal footing, then let's engage as Africans. Let's trade with each other and grow our own African economy. It is possible. It's been fascinating observing the evolution of your party, of your career. It's a pleasure talking to you always, Julius. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It.